children after six months, we now know, long before they become verbal, look around and try and figure out what it is that the person that they're interacting with knows or doesn't know. And they will adjust their action in terms of what they think is going on in that person's mind. So long before they can use language, they're already interested in the mind of others. And they more, even more than that, they expect others to be interested in them. I can uh, give you some uh, striking examples um, from research work that uh, we have done, but also research work that others have done. So if a, a, a child, even at the age of six months, is confronted by an adult who doesn't respond to them, who shows them what Edward Tronick had called a still face, a non-responsive face, having been in interaction with that baby previously, that child will be tremendously distressed. And that's really quite a universal experience. They will expect the person to react to them contingently, uh, react to them in a meaningful way, depending on what they have been doing, um, because they want to find themselves in the other person. They want to find someone who mirrors them, who reacts to them, because they do not start, none of us starts out knowing who we are, knowing what we are. We are interested in others, mainly in order to find out about ourselves. And what happens in the first three years of life, perhaps more important in that period than any other, is that we find out about the nature of our own minds, the nature of our thoughts and feelings in the relationship that we have with others. So I don't know when I'm smiling or I'm laughing as a baby what that experience is, what's the meaning of that experience is. If I see my emotion being responded to, by someone who mirrors it. I see that experience outside of myself. I can then take it back and that gives meaning to all the sensation I had in relation to my uh, happiness. But it's even more important when I feel anxious or when I feel sad. If I feel sad, I feel distress, I feel disorganized, I can feel lost in the world, lost in, to, in all my experiences. But there is my mum or my dad who responds to me with a reaction that indicates that they are aware of how I feel. I can look at them. I actually take into myself that representation of sadness and that helps me organize myself. Now I know what I feel. This is what we call emotion regulation. This is how we come to be able to regulate our emotions. So paradoxically, even though I now know perfectly well when I feel anxious or when I feel sad, my, the anxiety that I recognize as my anxiety is actually not my own anxiety, but is my picture of my mum looking back at me when I, as a baby, felt anxious. So if my mum wasn't there, if my mum ignored my anxiety, then I will find it far more difficult to come to organise my emotions.